blankets for dummies. Now, I have 16 potted miniature Phalaenopsis orchids that I want to update you guys with so you can grow along with me. <laughs> okay, so starting with my beautiful Sogo that is now completely in full bloom. Can you see that? That is just gorgeous. This is mine. I have had it almost two years now. You know, she is really spoiled. I have featured her in my ASMR video, okay? Where I was talking soft and sweet. I was talking soft and sweet, girl. So she had full bloom in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blooms. I mean, eight, if you count the one up under there. So very successful. If you guys want to know what to look forward to once you get your first flower spike, you gotta stay tuned to a future video, girl. So yes, honey, she now has uh, one, two, three, four, five leaves. She dropped um, four leaves previously when I moved her from the window. And so um, two leaves are on their way out of the door. Now I have stopped fertilizing her as I am, you know, doing an experiment just to see whether or not my blooms would last with more fertilizer or less fertilizer when she is in complete bloom. Now this right here is my Equestrious Phalaenopsis. This is also a species. These are also pots that I make. So if you would like you a clay pot that is well ventilated, you know that won't leave all of these hard stains on the pot, just email me at orchids, the number four dummies at gmail.com and I'll do that for you. Okay, baby, I will leave that information in the description box as well. Okay. So this baby is complete, is potted with um, Orchiata bark at the bottom with sphagnum moss on top. She now has a new leaf growing. Okay, so I am excited for her to rebloom. She is going to be one of those spring summer bloomers. Okay, yes, God, she is. She's not a winter bloomer. She's not a winter bloomer, no. So this right here is a cakey. Excuse me, it's watering day here at Orchids for Dummies. This kiki was given to me from a dear fail pal at my local orchid society. And what I am finding out about the kikis is that, honey, they will grow into um, a larger Phalaenopsis orchid and they will not stay small. Look at those beautiful purple roots, okay? She is losing a leaf, it's not gone yet. And both of these leaves were grown in my care. Look how big and masculine this is. It is really, really strong and really, really purple. So you know I love it. All right, baby, stay tuned. More to come. Stay Welcome tuned. on back, baby. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Please like this video and also subscribe if this is your first time to this channel. Now, these are the rest of my Sogo Phalaenopsis orchids. They have different names, but pretty much the same bloom. I am going to give you a little brief update on each and every one of them. This is from Hauserman Orchids. You know, she produced um, four beautiful blooms. Okay, it is a rebloom for me. She is still in her original container that she came in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine leaves. These Sogo Phalaenopsis, they usually have a lot of leaves, like the ones I previously showed you, like this one. Once I moved it from a location it was happy with, it dropped three leaves. So they are very temperamental species, Phalaenopsis orchids. As you can see, this baby right here has the roots Okay, she has the roots that we are all looking for. Now, remember how I get long, beautiful area roots is leaving them alone. I leave them alone. I don't go mess with them. Just like when my husband get off work, he want to go hide and he want to go run in the bathroom. I just leave them alone, honey. I come down here, water my orchids and mind my own business. So, she actually has new root production as well as this beautiful spike. Now this spike is totally grown in my care. This is the other Sogo that I have had for over eight years with beautiful buds just now forming. 
So she is a happy camper, a happy camper. This is another Sogo Vivian from Halderman's Orchid, still in its original container. It did not rebloom for me, but it is growing very, very new, beautiful area, area roots. A leaf down here that is dead, oh, but not ready to come off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine leaves with one to come. I told you the Sogos usually will collect a lot of leaves. Now she did not rebloom, but she is in her vegetative state. So she's doing very well. Stay tuned. I'm trying to keep it short. And welcome on back, baby. I am so glad to be here with you guys today. These are some of my other potted Phalaenopsis orchids that are actually in bloom. Now, I don't have the best of news, honey. I don't have the best of news, so let's start with good to the bad, okay? So starting with this little darling right here, I purchased it from my American Orchid Society here in Alabama last year. This is a surprise bloom for me, and oh my God, I did so good picking this baby out. You would see a more detailed video once she starts to fully open up and as well as on my ASMR video, okay? So we're just waiting. Another bud is opening up. Um, if you noticed the video, if you noticed the last segment, I'm sorry, the Equestrious Orchid had clusters of blooms just as this. So it lets me know that she has a little species inside of her. So we're going to give her the best of care. She is potted in Orchiata Bark with Sphagnum Moss on top, well established in the pot perlite on the bottom, okay? And this is also going to be a four inch slitted plastic pot okay mm -hmm. and it's great for you know putting inside of a pot now this little baby right here that is in a plastic ventilated pot has the orchiata bark on bottom sphagnum moss on top lots of beautiful area roots i got her from my orchid society here in alabama these were some rescue phalaenopsis orchids they were practically given away and so um, she is just now opening up. It's going to be a surprise bloom for me as well. Um, I don't know what's the tea, honey. I don't know what's the tea with the location I have them in. But I am um, experiencing a lot of bud blasts, honey. And you know, girl, girl, you know, you think you done with something. And girl, it just, girl. I just never thought I would be having bud blast in 2021. But new beginners, I want to let you guys know it is not always your fault. Growing indoors, growing in an uncontrolled environment is really, really difficult. It's really, really difficult. So anyone that is growing indoors at home, girl, I commend you. I take my hat off to you. Now, this is my beautiful Shillerania Orchid. You know, this is my absolute favorite. I just featured her in my ASMR video. Um, the blooms, honey, ha has stopped and deceased, honey. They have stopped and deceased. And I knew it was something going on when I saw the wilting in the um, blooms as if they were spent. But girl, this is happening, girl. All of this happened just today. So, I don't know if this is normal. If you have a Shellerania, let me know if the blooms are, you know, if they only last for a couple of days or not. I had the same problem with my Equestrious Orchid. So, let me know in the comment box below, typically your species Phalaenopsis Orchid, how long does those blooms last for you? Give me any advice that you could to help me maintain my blooms even longer. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Remember to like this video, okay? Share it with a friend. Let them know that you too can grow. Phalaenopsis orchids is not for the elite. It's not for the rich. It's not for the famous. It's for everyone. You too can grow. Orchids for dummies, if I'm able to do it with no growing experience other than my belly. <laughs> then you too can do it, okay? So these are some of my longest living miniature Phalaenopsis orchids. This one right here is also a Kiki. I know that she has grown to be, you know, very mature, but this is a actually a Kiki that was given to me from my American Orchid Society here in Alabama. 
Now, she is, I, I don't know, I don't know, but I expect to see, you know, more roots. That's the bad thing with having these slitted pots because they will dry out a lot quicker and dry your roots out as well as they will branch out of the pot. And if you have them in a decorative container, it's going to hurt the roots. It's going to hurt the roots and hurt the plant ultimately. So she has a new um, leaf that's been growing forever and ever. I think she has now become dormant because this leaf has been here for at least two to three weeks, okay, with nothing else going on. Now I see something down here. I don't know if it's a root. That's a crazy way for a root to, yeah, that's a root. That's a root. She got a root coming up. That's crazy. So she's one of those crazy orchids. This is a boy plant. It's a boy plant. So we're going to keep them lifted in prayer and keep it on moving. But as you can see, Orchiata Bark, Spagnum Moss on top. Mm -hmm. Moving on. This is Little Diva. She has allegedly purple blooms. I've had her two years and um, she has never rebloomed for me. She was given to me by Orchid Diva. I made a mistake in... Um, the moss had the moss was just really spent and salts had really accumulated in it um so you got to be very careful dealing with that sphagnum moss even if it is premium new zealand it's going to accumulate those salts okay and could possibly turn your pot acidic or burn your roots but she's doing just fine one two three four five five leaves grown in my care um i was thinking that this was cold damage but girl if you know what the tea is with this let me know in the comment box below okay but she is doing just fine this is previous cold damage mm -hmm. moving on along another orchid from houseman orchids and this is going to be foul stars April coming. A lot of people have this beautiful Phalaenopsis orchid. She's still potted in her original container. I'm going to start doing my repotting series. So you want to make sure that you are staying tuned. Now, no reblooms for me. I've had her now for about six months. Um, this leaf looks like it's about to get ready and come off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leaves okay and beautiful area roots very healthy and positive plant stay welcome tuned. back baby we are almost done with my 17 miniature phalaenopsis orchis potted indoors growth update <laughs> okay so let's keep it moving with this beautiful phalaenopsis right here which is a species doritas okay and um she has never rebloomed for me she was a seedling when i purchased her knowing that seedlings can take a year or two but definitely cheaper when it comes to the blooms i'm learning that she likes more water and um this is just not adequate for her so i'm going to repot her very soon so she can get a lot more hydration okay she did attempt to bloom for me but it quickly died okay that's why i don't count my blooms before they bud honey mm -mm. this baby right here i'm giving up on you i mean i've been reviving her and reviving her and she is growing so it's just a long, slow process, honey. I mean, we've been, I've had this baby for a year and this is what she looks like. She's been dealing with a lot of those fungal infections. I've been letting her fight it off naturally, but um, um, I don't know what I could do to give her better care. Maybe put her, you know, get her out of this setup, which is very ventilated and put her in something that's not so ventilated. I don't know, but I'm giving up on you. This is my beautiful Shilleriana that came from Louisiana Orchid Connection. I have had this since my last birthday in February 2020. And uh, Pal Heath can absolutely tell you that this is all it has done. He can also let you know that um, he has one as well that has not done too much of nothing, too much of nothing, but she did not die. So I'm going to give her some better loving care as, as she is still in her original container, honey. This one right here is one I'm probably going to get rid of. I purchased it from that eBay grower uh, where it says um, Florida grown orchids. 
you were able to get three miniature Fallon out of this Orcus for $10. I should have known something was wrong with that, but I did it anyway. And um, she has beautiful area roots, potted in Orchiata bark with sphagnum moss on top. Um, a lot of um, wrinkled leaves, okay? She does not drink a lot of water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine leaves, and majority of them are wrinkled. A lot of them are coming off, so she's just not, and you know, anytime they get to doing this wiggling and stuff in the pot, honey, that's never going to be a dead sign. That's an easy indication to know something in the pot is now deceased, honey. Stay tuned so I can show you one last sad orchid. Now, fam pals, I hate to leave you on a bad note, but I just want to let you guys know that even experienced growers like myself will have things to happen that you just have no control over. This was one of my most beloved Phalaenopsis orchid that had 11, 12 leaves at one time. Sometimes these Phalaenopsis orchids can become so attached to us that they will throw a temper tantrum if we do anything that they do not like. That's why oftentimes you will hear people say, Phalaenopsis orchids are not easy to grow. They are easy to grow, but they are for those that are not just for the blooms, but they want someone to love and care for them as well. So all I did was go out of town to go see my fail pal Randy. Shout out to Randy at Skinny Boy um, Farms. And I came back, honey, three days later, and she said, oh no ma'am, you will not leave me here in this house. And so she still has some um, viable leaves and roots on her. So what we are going to try to do, which I should have done three weeks ago, is try to see if she can produce us a kiki before she exits the building. Well, fam pals, I hope that you are growing along with me. I hope that you have a happy growing. Until next time.